Hello and welcome to episode three of the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street, hashtag Barkley Street, brought to you by our very good friends at Mercedes-Benz Vans. All you need is a little help from your friends sometimes, Marcus, and Mercedes-Benz Vans are our mates. How are you, man? I'm going well, mate. I'm going well. It's um, it's great to be back with you again for another ep of, of Barkley Street. And I must say, I've, you know, early doors, but... Um, not that I didn't think I'd, I'd enjoy it, but I, I'm really enjoying potting at the minute, mate. I'm glad to have joined the, the fraternity um, of, of potters um, and spending a bit of time with you, mate. It feels like it's going well. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, it's like it sounds like a really lovely compliment, and I'm really happy that you're enjoying it. But isolation, isolation can have a um, significant effect on people. It can do funny things to you. you well, you're cut off from your friends. You're cut off from all the other things in life that you enjoy and you being stuck with me all of a sudden feels a bit better than what it might. Is that- yeah, potentially. It could be, we could be a little bit inside a bubble and then once that bubble bursts, what happens then will be, will be an interesting yeah. question. Okay. So that, when, we, when we're released back into the community, you're just going to drop me like a... I won't, I won't want to know you, mate. I won't want to know you. <laughs> That's some cold, cold shit right there. Hey, what have you been up to? Has your, has your week looked any different? What have you been doing? Um, well, I mean, aside from the, the podcasting stuff that we've, we've done last week, which was, which was really good, a um, few bits and pieces. I think, you know, at the minute, like we discussed probably last week, training takes up, you know, maybe 30 or 40% of the week. So there's, there's a fair bit of time outside of that that, that obviously I'm keen to feel and, and a little bit keen to use somehow to, you know, if, if you're looking for... Um, some positives throughout this sort of situation we, we find ourselves in. How can we use some of this time that we not normally wouldn't be able to access for, for different things? Um, and there's a bit of reading going on. Um, I pulled out, I don't play the guitar, but I've had one for a while. Uh-huh. Just um, Yeah, I can see yours in the background and that's sort of what um, what piqued my interest a little bit. Um, so we'll have to get you to, to play a little bit for us. But that, that's something just more of a creative sort of outlet to try and teach myself a little bit in the, in the background. I think a couple of the other boys at the club are, are doing it also. Um, and then, you know, good chances to continue to talk to people and, and maybe a bit more so than you do normally. So there's a little bit, but how about you, mate? Um, uh, well, I sort of kept a pretty, it's a pretty constant rhythm at the moment. So mm. The afternoon, the drive radio kind of keeps a fair bit of yep. structure in the day, so that which has been which has been good. How do you find you know from a content point of view? Like obviously, there's you know less and um, you know current sort of stuff to probably talk about, less footy, less sport. That's you can talk on topical stuff. How are you finding that side of things with being able to create stuff or archive, going to the archives or just yeah. your own thoughts and feelings? Is it still finding it okay? Um. Oh, I've kind of enjoyed it to be honest. But okay. it, there's a it's a bit of a it's, it's a challenge because it's not the yep. daily conversation. Yep. You know who's in, who's out, and all that. Um, but uh, but I kind of like going into archive and nostalgia, and and we kind of had on our little show. We've got lots of little um, segments and games that have just been able to stay in. So it hasn't. We haven't had to kind of panic and reinvent yep. the wheels too much. I think we're a bit better place than a bit better place than most. Yep. Well it's good mate. Well done. Yeah. Hey I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask you. So uh, Friday night after uh, after happy hour, which was a bit of a hit. Mm. Yeah. Um, the the footy uh, the footy world was buzzing again mate. The um the replay of the the two thousand and sixteen <clears throat> pardon me preliminary final. Um first of all did you watch it? And uh, and then we'll get stuck into what you know what what your memories are of that of that night. So it's a pretty pretty special pretty special game of footy. Yeah, it was. Um, there's probably no no doubt. And I was in two minds probably going into like hearing that it was on. I knew that the recall was going to be on because um, I think whether it was foolishly, I didn't want um, my memory of the game and how I felt like it, it played out on my emotions that were attached to it to then maybe not meet the, the viewing capacity of it. So I was sort of sitting there in the hours before thinking, do I watch it? Like I was really mulling it over because you hear a lot of footballers who play in those sort of bigger games talk about how they never watched 
those type of games until they retire. Um, and I sort of thought about it and I thought, oh, I'm not sure. I think with the, with the current environment that we're in, I felt like I sort of needed it. I needed to, to watch a, a game of football. Obviously, it, it was a pretty good game of football, but to get some sort of... Um, you know, emotion and feeling back without not being able to... I, don't, I normally watch a little bit of footy during the season anyway. Um, but then I, I did. I, I sat down and watched it. Um, and at the end, I probably felt like, um, you know, watching it was almost not harder to do than playing it. But you, you know, by watching it, you have no control over what can happen. So mm-hmm. I can only imagine that that was some of the feelings and emotions that a lot of the people at the game and obviously at home watching it would have felt too. So that was a, a cool experience to have. So it kind of, would you would you say it kind of met the expectation? It was yeah, it did. It did, and albeit different, I think capacity. Obviously, not being you know obviously out there and playing, and then clearly it was a game in the past. I think that you know Dwayne Russell did an awesome job. I think of, of calling it. He he sort of and based on what I was reading, he um you know had people a little bit on the edge of their seat with his calling of it too, which which really made it an interesting an interesting position to be in as well. But um, there were things that came out of the game that I, you probably don't recognise in the game without actually having watched it. Like Eastern Wood's first quarter, I didn't realise Woody had played so well to start the game. I think you, you know when people are having an influence, but um, yeah. he sort of really got us going in those early stages of the game. Was there, was there any, apart from Woody's great start, was there, was there anything in the game that you'd either forgotten or was different to how you'd sort of played it out in your head? Uh, probably not probably nothing that stood out likely I think all the key aspects and probably because it's been um, you know a few years since I think a lot of it's been probably discussed and the key people and players that that certainly played a role and um, Clay Smith's you know game was was unbelievable and his whole final series was really under considerable duress going into that into that game from an emotional and um, you know outside of football perspective um, but some of his his contests and efforts um, were, were you know tone setting and really um, gave a lot of people confidence and that's what Clay did as a footballer was you just walked a little bit taller playing around Clay because of his aggression and physicality and then his finishing was on another level too so that was already pretty much stated but being able to watch it you know back it just in my head and from my point of view, it just went up another notch. Do you want to let the people know, like for, for those who I'm sure you know, a lot of our supporters know, but what, you know, the Clay the clay situation that week was? Yeah, so one of Clay's pretty much best mates passed away during the week of the game and he'd been he'd been back home to the funeral during the week. Um, and, and and obviously anyone having to, to go through that is, is, is going to be tough, but then particularly to front up to... Um, a football match, a big football match that, that weekend uh, was incredibly, um, you know, strong and courageous on his behalf. Um, and, we- and whether that, you know, I, n- I have no doubt it sort of spurred him on from an emotion point of view to be able to want to be out there and, um, you know, potentially play in his honour. I, I, you know, it was just incredible to, to be a part of. Do you remember much from that week around, like off the field, around the games, how you were sort of feeling, what was happening around you? Not Nothing in too much detail. And this is one of the, you know, not bigger regrets, but you, you reflect on it and you go, damn, I wish I paid more attention to the to the details or the little things that happened. And speaking to people who are probably more aware of, of that um, helps because I think it brings back certain elements of the weeks leading up to the games um, that you probably forget. But I think because we had you know, made a good point of, of enjoying the the, um, the weeks and the build-up to the games, but also trying to keep everything as business as usual, that you continue to just sort of process things and then move on and move on. And um, uh, the one thing I do probably remember from the actual day, and I would always, and I still do before, you know, any game or even away games, is I sort of finish breakfast, have a coffee, and then sort of head for a walk on my own. It's sort of a chance for me to just not start to turn the volume up on, on the game sort of things, but just have a bit of time to reflect on, you know, almost a, being grateful for the position I'm in that later today I'll be playing and it gives me a chance to think about not bigger picture things, but reflect a tiny bit. And where the ground is, um, the Sydney showgrounds, um, there's a fair bit of space, but it's a bit in the middle of nowhere. So you, you can't really, yeah, it is a little bit, you get that sort of feel. Um, and I remember like walking out of the hotel and across the road and you pretty much to walk, you've got to walk past the ground virtually. And I just remember walking past and almost feeling this level of 
familiar familiarity it's a big one it's a tongue tie um and i don't know whether that was because um you know we, we knew that there's you know people traveling out there was going to be a sense of of homeness i guess to to the potential crowd that were coming in that the um you know what we'd be doing later today but i just wasn't and i'm not a pretty much a, a real nervous person but i just didn't feel um like a uncertainty around being there and being ready to play so that was probably just pure emotion and feeling that i had the morning of the game uh is there a moment from the game that like re-watching it back is there was there because mm. there's i mean there's so many is there yep. is there one that kind of Yep, and I remember I, I remember seeing it from down the ground, and um, it was sort of late in the. Pretty sure it was the last quarter, right before Caleb Daniel sort of kicks his goal, where he snaps it sort of twenty odd out, and there's a ground ball that virtually sits right in the middle of Clay Smith and Ryan Griffin, and it's yeah. sort of trickling towards both of them. And Clay and Griff, um, we were pretty good mates at the football club, um, and so they both, you know, there was no. Uh, it was sort of funny that that ended up being them two together, but the, the ferocity that they both attacked the ball, um, yeah. Clay obviously pretty much held his ground. They met like a like two titans that just basically crashed into each other. Um, yeah. Clay kept his feet. I can't remember if he flicked it off or just he just halved the ground ball and the ball stayed in the area. And, and yeah. Caleb came through, swooped on it and snapped the goal. And I just remember, poor, I was like, that was a, a sort of game, sort of not shifting moment, but I remember that one vividly yeah. as important. Yeah, I, I remember that at the time, and it did feel like a bit of a just slot, not a game shift. Well, I suppose it yeah. did, but yeah. they, they didn't have momentum. and It just felt like that was a key moment, and we sort of won it, and it was just like, oh, okay. So that can, for, for the team that sort of ends up scoring off the back of you, go, oh, okay, there's a bit of energy, momentum. For the other team, they go, oh, oh, oh like that. We mm, yeah. don't know if we could have. It would be hard from here. Whether there's a mental aspect to it, you, there's probably that more so than anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's still it's regarded as one of the great games, but it's the best game of footy I've ever seen. Um, mm. and, and even on Friday night, there was you know a lot of people. A lot of people still hold that belief, and um, you know a lot of you know especially the guys who played you know a long time ago. A lot of them have got it high up the order. I know Jamie Brereton's got it very high up the list as one of the great games of all time. So, I mean, that must make you feel good to be... I mean, we know what you achieved the week after, but it must mm. it must be a good feeling to be a part of a game that is um, you know, rated so highly and one that you've played so well in. Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah... Um... Yeah, you do. I think at the, the the beginning of your career, when you start, yeah, obviously your expectations are pretty are pretty simple to just being able to play and be a part of the the team. And then I think when you as you get older and mature, you, you enjoy being part of the bigger games and playing in, in those sorts of games. And um, for us as a, as a football club to have been part of that, and obviously like you said, we go on to do something pretty special the next week but just making it was a pretty big thing for the football club and um to do that and then obviously go on and win the next week it, it obviously meant something to, to a lot of people but um yeah it's certainly reflecting on it you, you definitely go oh it was nice to be a part of that one for sure all right you ready for some fan questions my friend yep hit me i'm ready they were good right. last week they were good last week so keep them coming hashtag Absolutely. um all right this Week. This one's from Evangeline. Evangeline. And it, yep, it's a it's a nice little compact question. What's your favourite snack or meal? Mm-hmm. Oh, what's my favourite snack or meal? Um, well, I've always said if I was my last meal that I could ever have would be lasagna, being Italian and the heritage of pasta being a pretty big a big thing um lasagna would always be my my last sort of meal i could ever have so um I, i've probably got to learn how to make it myself i reckon if i'm going to do that um just so then i'm obviously oh. inept and capable so that might be something for me to an iso okay. skill to hone in on while I'm, while I'm here at home well i'd like to get a report next week on some lasagna yeah send through your tips People out there, our Bulldogs Army, send through your tips if you've, you've got some good ones around making a nice homemade lasagna. I'd love to hear them. But don't bother if you're not Italian because they don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's no prerequisites, but that yeah. would definitely be high up there. Please, <laughs> <laughs> the professionals. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. This next one is from uh, James Ditch. 
we did uh, we did kind of cover this, but what's your favourite 2016 finals moment? So maybe one um, outside of the uh, the prelim. Oh, um, outside of the prelim, we'll go to the the grand final. Then I mean, there was a number of probably pretty special moments, and and goals are always up there. You know, key sort of game breaking goals. But um, Moz's tackle on Buddy Franklin was was one that um, obviously still gets credit um, for for you know, what it's worth and what it did for us, but particularly for his, you know, with the current state of his back and how he was playing with pretty much a broken back to have laid a tackle in such a big moment. It was so Moz-esque um, and I'm glad it gets the recognition um, that it did because it was massive. Moz-esque could be a yep. ad for the dictionary, I reckon. Yep. Um, <laughs> good. Uh, this one's from Craft Beer Jag. Right, uh, okay. I, I assume that's not the, the Christian name, but um, have you watched... <laughs> Have you watched Tiger King yet? No, I haven't. I haven't, man. Um, I've seen a lot of talk about it, so I'm missing all the all the memes and the gags about it online. Um, but mm. some interesting viewing. Have you watched it yet? No, I haven't. I'm not sure <laughs> if I will. Yeah. I, I need someone to explain it to me a bit more. Mm. I need a bit of a. I need a bit of a teaser. I need to be yep. convinced. Yep. Well, I know, yeah, I know some of the boys have, have watched it because um, they've sent a message or two around about it. So we might have to ask one of them um, potentially a yeah. bit later on. Oh, uh, yeah, good idea. Well, we've got yeah. a special guest coming up. So, Do. so I, maybe now is just a good a good time to um, uh, just to let people who are listening know or watching how we'll do it. Is the early? Uh, this is the main podcast. This is Barclay Street, and this will this will yep. always be Bulldogs flavored. So it'll yep. always our guest, and we'll try we'll try and get a guest every week. But it'll be a, a Bulldog personality, it'll be a player, yep. an ex player, a supporter. Yep. It'll, be, it'll be Bulldogs. Yep. And then for our uh, for our little happy hour drinks on a on a Friday. Yep. Throw the net a bit broader. That yeah, that's gets, the door, like we said, the yeah, door yeah, wide open. Yeah, yep. we just look at the door and, and see who wanders in. So just, yep. so just get prepared for that. All right, next question. Uh, uh, this is from MPJ88. What books are you reading at the moment? Good question. What books? Good. Great question. Um, for some yeah. reason, I when I started probably not investing in reading, but the last sort of 18 months, I probably tried to pick up a book here or there a little bit more than I used to. Um, and for some reason, I decided to start two or three right at the same time which is oh. which is not bad but I'm not getting through any of them as much as I would like I know so I'm gonna have to make a decision I started reading because I knew this question was coming it's a book called Sapiens um, which um, I think's got a pretty strong um, history here it is here if you you know if you're looking at home it's called Sapiens yeah. um, and it's a brief history of human mankind which is sort of the evolution of man a little bit which is which has been interesting um, to read so that and then I do like Dan Brown one of my favorite Dan Brown books is the Da Vinci Code um, so I've started to read his other one Inferno so oh, yeah. I'm getting through those two slowly and then when I duck back home the other day these are probably hopefully will get read mum had two of the um, Harry Potter um, books sitting around so I thought oh, maybe I'll give those a go because I've never actually um, I reckon I've read the first one but not the second one so that's yeah. me at the minute yeah, so, nice cross section there. No yep. leather sole in there, I noticed, but that's okay. I've um, read that. What about right nice up to where I yeah, right up to the end where I got to mention, <laughs> which was good. <laughs> Just read that bit. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, this is from Trav. Uh, doesn't say whether it's Trav Cloak, but it could be. Okay, uh, Cloaky. Yep, it says Trav. Any new okay. hobbies you've picked up since being at home? Well, you mentioned one before, yeah. I did, yeah, guitar, which is not yet a hobby, I guess, because it's 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 not painstaking, but I've only started with a couple of chords, which is basically online YouTube videos that are helping me get through, and I can I can I can hear some sort of a tune, which is which is a good sign. Like I can hear. Are, are you practicing a song or just chords? To start with, just chords, I think, once I learn the main sort of chords, because based on what I've read and heard, that there's probably four main chords that make up a whole heap of songs, like millions of songs. So I thought I'll start there and then I'll, I'll start working towards a song. So Piece of advice? Yep. Pick, pick a song. Yep. 
I'll send you a list of so there's easy ways to find uh, you know three chords and the truth, man. That's all you need. Yep. Okay. And, okay. And I'll send you a list and pick out your favorite one and then practice those chords so you can start to once you hear your song, yeah. Then you're okay. Little, it'll be a good little motivation. To, all right. That's all the that kids out. Uh, says the bloke is not very good on guitar, but. <laughs> That, uh, yeah, that's every teacher, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, this is from Henna Sharma. Who yep. was your favourite player growing up? Topical. Oh, very topical. Um, I actually posted on Instagram about this not, not so long ago. Um, and my favourite growing up was uh, Matthew Richardson. I was a Tigers fan. Um, you know, uh, yes, which, which we talk a lot about. Um, and there might be something in that, but um, yeah, Matthew Richardson was was my favourite player and hero. I think particularly because he was so um, enigmatic is probably the, the best way to describe it with his energy. And he was, you know, there was always something happening around Richo, which oh, I, I loved. Yeah, he was exciting. Yeah, it was always, um, always dram- it was always dramatic. It yeah, was good every it was time. Great. If it wasn't, it really wasn't. Yep, yep, one hundred percent. Celebrity question here. Yep, this from, celebrity. This is from the one and only Barclay Street spirit animal, Shane Giggs. Oh, Bigsy. One, uh, our very own, asks, Bonte, do yep. you mind if I start calling you Mark? Mark. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. I haven't had Mark before. Um, it does not surprise me. Bigsy has... <laughs> Question this with something so ambiguous, but at the same time, I don't mind it. So I'll give him the rights, him at him only, the rights to call me Mark. I wonder what Bigsy's up to in ISO. Oh, he could be a future guest for us. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'm surprised he's got time to question us. Like I would have just thought he's flat out at the minute. No one's flat out, mate. Um, <laughs> I like how he's called, he's asked, he's Bonty, do you mind if I call you Mark? So it's a yeah. Tool. Yeah. Little gap. And you yeah. refer to it as ambiguous, which is kind of good as well. Hey, that's that's, uh, that's the fan questions again for this week. Make sure you keep them coming, guys. We love them. Hashtag Barkley Street. Um, yeah, we're up for answering any and all of your questions. Uh, we'll be back after this short break, a little Mercedes-Benz Vans break, and we'll be back with the left footer himself, Matthew Welcome back, Bulldog fans, to Barclay Street, uh, Mercedes-Benz Vans, our friends. This is who brings this podcast to you every week. And this week, we welcome the man who doesn't kick left footers. He swats forehands with his left foot. <laughs> Matt Suckling, the swirler himself. Matt Swirler Suckling. Welcome to the podcast, suckers. How are you, man? Good morning, guys. I'm going very well. How are you too? Yeah, Good, right. thanks, mate. We're all right, Bob. Yeah. We're okay. We're doing no, well. Yeah. Yeah. That was a nice intro. That was one of your yeah. better ones. Did you have you got that written down? Is that that's what ISO time for Bob is just to craft nice intros for our guests. You, you wait till week twelve of isolation where you <laughs> <laughs> like John Laws. That was absolute showtime. Um, Pig, thanks for joining us, mate. Yeah, you take over, Bon. Oh, thanks, mate. I'll steer. Is that all right? You go for it, mate. Beautiful. Um, mate, first up, how are you going? How are you coping in, you know, isolation life a little bit? Um, we've all got similar things to be doing, but also got enough time to do some other stuff. So how's it hanging? Um, been going all right, yeah. Uh, training's been going pretty well. Training with Taylor. Taylor Dre, he obviously lives in Richmond as well. So um, we're probably going to get sick of each other by end of isolation. But um, training at the moment's going really well. And um yeah, away from that, I've just had the girlfriend move in last Friday, so that's yep. a fair change. Uh, she's yep. come over from New York, so um, I've been on cleaning and uh, some other duties that I haven't done for a while, so it's been, yep. it's kept me pretty busy. Yep. How's, how, how are you coping so far then? Obviously, because you had lived previously, were you on your own before that? Yes, I've been on my own for yeah, four or five years, so yep. um, okay. we've been so big, together in the house for four coming. or five nights. Yeah, but no, it's been great. It's been good. So um, my house has never looked so clean. So it's been good. 
Good, good stuff. Um, and I know there's there's a whole heap of stuff that you're you're interested in probably outside of, of football. And there's a fair bit of time now, obviously, to, to fill in. There's opportunities to, to do some things, albeit in a bit limited sort of circumstances. I know you're into your photography, your pop culture sort of stuff, your golf. Have you been able to use some of that time to help explore some other things, or what are you going to do to try and you know fill in some of that time outside of probably training hours? Um, yeah, so obviously with the photography stuff and uh, the way social media and things are going at the moment, I'm looking to enrol in a course. Actually, it should be in there today, um, social and digital marketing. So and that's all online and you can study at your own pace. So while I've got this time off, um, yeah, it gives me an opportunity to really crunch into that. And um, yeah, once I'm allowed back out of the house to use the photography skills and create that content that I like and doing like doing. What's your what's your discipline like with study suckers? Were you a good student? What do you reckon, Bob? <laughs> I reckon like that. Maybe, maybe with just general, not so much. But I suppose with the photo- specifically, if you were if you were into it, you'd be pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's something I stuff I'm passionate about. Uh, yeah, I can really commit to and focus on. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to get into it, and um, over the next month or so, uh, hopefully, chew through a fair bit of it. Yep. What have you been doing? Have you, has you picked up any any sort of new skills or in, in this sort of weird circumstance, have you found yourself sort of um, engaging in like cooking, any, anything that you wouldn't normally sort of try? Uh, I've definitely cooked a little bit more than I normally would. Um, I don't know if my skills, I don't know if I've upskilled too much yet, but um, over the next month or so, I should, should pick up a few new tricks, yeah. What are you we were talking what before? Are you, what are you absorbing in the uh, on the, in the Netflix world, the television world? Uh, I went to Tiger King straight away. Um, I'm not too sure. Knew it. Not, I, yeah. I was, we were talking about this before. You 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 struck us as a Tiger King sort of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have been, the blonde hair hasn't helped me. I've, there's been a few comparisons <laughs> getting flown around, but um. Yeah, that's, that was an amazing watch. And, um, yeah, the memes and everything since then uh, has been good to keep an eye on. So you've watched it. You're finished. It's done. I've seen I've finished Tiger King, yes. I'm still confused. And, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, so very like, strange. Is it, is it one season and done? I, I, I'm not really across it at all. Yeah, there's about seven or eight episodes. Um, yeah, the twists and turns and just the lives that these people lead. I'm not sure whereabouts it is, but it is just wild. And um, I think there's one more episode getting released this week on Netflix I did see. Um, so I'm not sure how that ties everything together. But, um, yeah, it's very, very interesting. And you highly recommend you? you just well, I think, think it's a must watch at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Got a few spare hours this afternoon. I might have to invest. I need to yeah. know. I don't know. The feeling of not knowing what's going on and the conversation just hurts me. I reckon a little yeah. bit. I wouldn't mind knowing what all the what all the fuss is about. I kind of get. Yeah, I, I must admit, I kind of go the other way sometimes. When a show really? gets when it gets too popular, I'm like, oh, I've missed it. Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> go somewhere else. I'll leave it yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. You're a bit of a gamer, aren't you as well, Pig? Yes, yeah, a little no, bit. Yeah, um, yeah Fe- probably. Continue. I was just going to say FIFA, um, 2K. Where does it where does it sit with you? And are you playing yeah. a heap or not as much? Uh, I'm a FIFA man for sure. Um, yeah, I did download FIFA last week, so looking to get back into that as well. Um, yeah, I started playing it again last night. And I'm pretty ordinary, fair to say. But as we said, we've got <laughs> yeah, a few hours absolutely. to practice. So yeah. Yep. Um, well, that's good. It's a good way to sort of, you know, Bob, you might not, you know, get it as much being a little bit, bit older. Just stating <laughs> the facts, mate. Um, but it's still a good way to obviously connect or bet through a, you know, a gaming sort of console. It's still a good chance to stay in touch with, with each other and teammates with something. A little, the NBA at the minute are doing like no. a, a league of game. Oh, yes, mate. No, that's a dad question. Yep. So are you playing against people... Are they real people and are they yeah. people you know? Uh, yeah, so uh, you can go on randomly and play against any random that's ready to have a game or I've got a few mates who are setting up little like yeah, mini leagues um, and you can have round robins against all guys you know and you can put headphones on and uh, trash talk and play against all people you know. So that, as uh, Bont was saying, it's a good way to keep in touch and have a bit of competitive spirit going. Could it be used yep. as a dating service as well? 
well, potentially. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, as in, like, you know, that's a date. Well, that's one of your dates is to oh, oh, play each other in FIFA so, or man. 2K. So can you talk, can you, like, message one another, like, after, during a game of, of soccer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure I, I don't know if it's a random, but yeah, I know definitely during the game you can talk and whatnot. That's a new use. That's definitely a new use. You should, you know, potentially copyright that idea. Gaming dating service. Yeah, it might work. You, you never know. In these times, things mm. might things might come off big. They normally would. Mm. Do you, are you someone who um? Will you watch much footy throughout this time, suckers, or will you sort of just go sort of away from uh, the footy? Probably a bit ad hoc, yeah, randomly, sporadically, watch a little bit, but um, probably won't watch a whole heap. But as we get closer to back into training and back into more games, probably um, yeah, start reinvesting more time, for sure. Yeah. How is it for you two with the, um, you know, there's, there's so much uncertainty around, you know, when the season will start, if, if the season will start. But one of, the, one of the timelines is that you guys would need, say, three weeks of you know the full-time training before a game does that kind of does that how does that sound to you that sort of timeline um yeah i suppose for me personally um yeah looking at that timeline i'm just trying to do as much as i can um, behind the scenes now that if we were to go back and they did give us that timeline of three weeks i'm in a position where i can use that three weeks to get back to a level where i'm ready to play um I suppose that's the time I'm we're kind of being given, so that's what I've been working to behind the scenes. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty similar um, with Piggy in that regard. But the, I guess there's a little bit of a um, also a positive from a training perspective at the minute is like um, Piggy mentioned about you know training and what you can potentially do a little bit extra or training to your own sort of needs. Oh, there's been conversation over probably the last year or two in regards to the, the length of the off season, potentially a shorter pre-season as a whole um, sort of industry at times. Um, and you've got to sort of obviously work out how you sort of sit with it. It does give players a little bit of an opportunity to have some freedom in their training and in their program, uh, potentially to do some things a little bit differently or, or cater some things to their own needs. So um, every player is probably going to be a little bit different, but I reckon for across the board, three to four weeks just probably makes sense from a load point of view to be able to cope with whatever's going to come once the season sort of gets back and gets rolling. Yeah, so... Yeah, we'll continue to sort of wait and see where where it comes to because obviously we're only getting the information out now as we sort of sort of hit it each sort of week and each day, um, and then you know hopefully it goes to plan and we can still continue to um, you know move forward and obviously get some games going again. But the prospect of potentially playing more games in a shorter period of time probably doesn't phase too many players from a playing perspective because we love playing football um, but it'd just be you know how you pull up from the games and, and how many players you can probably use to help cope, cope the best with that I suppose you've just got to embrace all the, the uncertainty and the unorthodox nature of, of what gets what gets served up yep. hey, so, cause you've, got a, you've got a little dog haven't you and because uh, Marcus here our, our dear our dear friend Marcus here is, is contemplating uh, getting a dog adopting a dog yeah. um would you uh what would you what would you say to marcus as a potential uh, puppy owner uh yeah it's fantastic and obviously in these isolation times it's nice to have a little friend following you around and um it's probably the best time to to get one and integrate it into your lifestyle is why you've got the the time to be able to train it and uh look after it and uh, make it feel at home sure he's very lonely he's very lonely yeah well so what are you thinking? You're going to adopt one? Yeah, a lot of I haven't. FIFA. Yeah, a lot of FIFA. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely weighing it up. I'm really, I'm, I am really liking the idea of a kelpie at the minute. Um, and and Bob and I have had a chat or two about it. Um, because of of his kelpie. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm definitely keen. And like I said, pretty good time to, um, probably invest in, um, uh, you know, like I said, have a little mate around. So, uh, watch this space. I, I, I think we need to get a Twitter poll sorted out today. So that four dog breeds. So Kelpie one. Yep. What else would you like on the, you can have you can have four on? Um Border Collie, probably is one of the other ones, I reckon. Yeah. Okay. Um I mean a bulldog has to be on there, doesn't it? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so, I, so yeah, one more. Once we get once we get the dog, then we need to sort yep. the name. So this could be a bit of a. This is a okay. This is a, okay. Um, maybe uh, one, one more breed. Uh, maybe a lab. Labrador. Ooh, oh, it's a bit dunk. It's a bit sort of a bit dry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, otherwise, I don't know. Gold. Uh, what about German, German Shepherd? Yeah, let's go with Ooh. German Shepherd. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll, 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 I think we'll get this put out under the socials, as they say. Yeah. Would, you, would you adopt? Yeah, I'm open to it. Absolutely. I do like the idea of, a, of having a, you know, if it's a puppy, that'd be great because it's probably yeah. a good chance to do that right now during this period. So yeah. I don't think there's many puppies out there that you can adopt. They seem to get, um, based on what I've seen, they get um, snapped up pretty quickly. So um, I'm probably open to both. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, sometimes, you know, the big, the big footy star will wander in and <laughs> you pick it up. Uh, well, um, all right. Well, I reckon uh, I reckon we could help him out there, uh, suckers. Kelpie, border collie, a bulldog, or a German shepherd. And then once we get the dog, then we'll sort out the name and maybe you know Names, yeah. a bulldog themed name could be pretty good. <laughs> you we'll thinking boy, girl, say. boy or girl? Uh, yeah, I like the idea of both. Um, there's you know there's there's something about I think um, you know Lindsay, boy Lindsay sort Gilding. of owner female dog. What's that? <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay, is that a name? Lindsay Gilby. It's a, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's versatile. Okay, all right. <laughs> we'll we'll um, see what we can work with. Hey, suckers! Thanks so much for uh, stopping by. I know you've got heaps on at the moment. <laughs> um, you couldn't escape us. Um, but it, yeah, no, it's great to great to see you. Great to catch up and hear that you're doing well. Um, hope you uh, hope we see you back out on the field pretty soon. Obviously, but. Look after yourself and we'll, we'll check in with you down the track. My pleasure. Thank you, guys, and good luck with the Twitter poll. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Pete. See you both. See ya. All right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for tuning in to Barclay Street, episode today. Uh, give us a listen and watch out on uh, Friday evening for happy hour. Bond, do you want to tease who the guests might be or you just want to wait to just let it? No, nah, right, let's let it marinate. Let's let it marinate. We'll um, obviously keep everyone guessing and on their on their toes. Um, but should be another big big app of happy hour. I'm loving it. Happy hour was great. It was great with Warney last week. Um, I hope hope people enjoyed it. He's a an extremely obviously good character. He brings a lot of um, you know a lot of influence and a, a, and some great some great things. So I hope I enjoyed it. I don't know about you, but I hope the people enjoyed listening to it. I love it. It's always good to catch up with a fellow leg spinner um, to enjoy just swapping notes on the art of the fizz. Ooh. Yeah, I'm sure he was giving them, you were taking them more so. Is that I mean, probably I've been the nature of it? We started texting him afterwards, but um, <laughs> no reply yet. No reply yet. Okay. Um, oh, well. That's all right. <laughs> I'm sure he's busy at the minute. I'm sure yeah. he's really busy. Good luck with the lasagna. Um, have a crack yep. at guitar lessons. Yep. And, uh, and let's see if we can find you a puppy. Yep. Right. Big to do list. Loving it. Thanks, mate. Right, see you, man. I'll check, check you soon.